Hey everybody, welcome back. So one of my last couple of videos was the review of the Jaris PETG filament. And one of the things I printed for that review was a little pair of pliers. And I got them sitting here. Let me set my coffee down. I got them sitting here and um, I printed them more as a whim than anything else. Because to be quite honest, I've always considered plastic tools to be a toy, you know, something... You'd buy a Hasbro thing you'd buy down at Toys R Us for your eight-year-old kid to give to them so they could help dad or mom around the house and not hurt themselves with a real tool. But the more I used this little plastic pair of pliers, the more I started wondering, are 3D printed tools really useful or are they just display items or toys? So I thought to myself, what's the simplest 3D printed tool that I could make that I might have a use for and I could test this concept. And of course probably the simplest 3D printed, the, the simplest tool one could make is a club, but I'm not going around smacking people with a club, even a plastic one. A pry bar, I don't think that lends itself to 3D printing. A hammer, well you know what, you wouldn't think off the top of your head that a plastic hammer would be of any use. But being a hammer aficionado, which I'm sure most of you won't find that particularly unusual that I am, it's not that outlandish an idea. I've had numerous plastic hammers. I've had metal hammers with plastic ends, and I've had all plastic hammers. Most dead blow hammers are all plastic. So I thought to myself, i got a number of hammers. Oh, actually I've got a boatload of hammers. Anything from little tiny hammers to great big hammers, dead blow hammers, I've got lots and lots of hammers. It's always good to have the right tool for the job and, ha and hammer is no different. If somebody asks, says they need a hammer and the only hammer you can give them is a claw hammer, you're, you've missed the boat. The ones I use around this area, this little maker space and the 3D printing the most is what I call my beer hammer. It's a, a, a little thing my wife gave me a number of years ago cast iron or cast steel, and it's a bottle opener, yeah. but it's also quite useful as a, a little light duty hammer. It's very heavy. And the other one I use a lot, and I think I, this was probably my dad's, was this hammer here. It has two removable ends, one brass and one plastic, has a removable end cap, and inside there there is a little, there's a brass drift. It's stamped Lyman, so I think it probably came from the Lyman company many years ago. Lyman used to make, and might still, make um, tools for people who reload firearm ammunition. So I like this design. I like it a lot, but I want a dead blow hammer. So I got on Thingiverse and I started looking at dead blow hammers, and I found a couple that were close to the concept I had in mind, but not exactly. So. I did what I should have done originally. I popped in the fusion and I just made what I wanted. Now, it wasn't a waste of time for me on Thingiverse because it gave me some new ideas. And besides, I like browsing Thingiverse. So for now, let's go over to fusion and then let's look and see what I made and let's get it printed and let's see, you know what? Maybe a 3D printed plastic hammer really isn't such an outlandish idea. Okay, so this is the concept I have in mind, and I made a couple of different versions of this, but the more I think about it, the more I like this one the best, and I'll tell you why. And I'm not going to go through step by step how I created this. Honestly, it's really, really easy to do. This is just a series of circles and extrusions with a shell command for this part here, a, a sphere command for the ball on the end, and some threads. That's really all it is. Anybody who wants me to walk through it, let me know and I will. I normally don't do that anymore because nobody watches my Fusion 360 videos. So, let's take a look and see at the, con the idea I have in mind. First off, I hemmed and hawed over, is the handle removable? And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, and I'm thinking about how the layer lines are going to go. And of course, I'm also thinking about, you know, how much infill, or not infill, but support I'm going to have. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, I really don't think I want the handle to be removable. Because I don't really think I'm going to break the main piece of this. I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be driving, you know, three-quarter ton truck axles in and out with this hammer. 
it's to use around 3D printers and around the house for light duty things or I want a non-marring dead blow hammer. So the idea of this is pretty simple. I am going to take one of these plugs, I'm going to thread it in until it stops and I'm going to glue it and then I'm going to flip the thing over and from this side I'm going to fill it with my dead blow media. You can use sand, you can use lead shot, you can use steel BBs, whatever whatever you want. I've got a bag of lead shot, probably number seven or seven and a half, so I think that's what I'm going to be using. Then you put another plug in the other side, glue it, cap it off, and you want to leave a little bit of empty space in there so your media can move around. That's what gives it the dead blow functionality, it doesn't bounce. And then also you'll, you'll print one of the handle and the head one and two of each of these of these plugs and caps and then a cap one in I've got it all put together in three components but it separates out easily enough for printing uh, can you make a cap out of TPU make one out of nylon make what one out of whatever you want so at first I had made this piece and this piece a single part with this just being solid and a threaded male extension coming up but then I thought you know I really want to seal my media inside because there's nothing well I won't say there's nothing more irritating but one of an irritating thing that can happen to you in the shop is smacking something with a dead blow hammer having it split open and having the media in it go all over the place it's really annoying and I've had it happen a couple of times so I want to seal this off these are going to be are going to be glued and solid and then the caps are going to be simple replacements of different types and I can even go out to my little my little um, lathe and I could make one of these out of aluminum or brass if I wanted to or steel if I wanted to I would don't think I would ever bother making a steel head for this aluminum or brass would be as as hard as I would want to go but um there you have it that's my concept and um, like I say this was very simple to design I've got it loaded over here in Cura and I thought and, and one thing to note here is if you're gonna print all the pieces at once you're probably gonna want to come into these um, whole horizontal expansion settings and fix it so that holes are a little bit larger I've got point one set but um, it may take some experimentation now you could also print the whole print the um, print this part or just print this plug threaded plug part you know 1% smaller and that would probably be enough to make sure you can get the thread started on it but other than that let's um let's click preview because I've already sliced it I'm gonna have a fair amount of infill not infill sorry I'm gonna have a fair amount of support but that's my concept so from here on in I'm not sure what I can do except print it and try it so that's what we're gonna be, go next I am going to I think I'm gonna make this out of PLA plus uh, another good option would be that um, that PLA I tested from who was it who made that PLA let me grab it and look I don't know why I'm coming up blank the Polyterra PLA from Polymax that was really tough and the the support removed very easily so that's an option as well and I'm gonna have to think about it as I get this over to the 3d printer about what I'm gonna use and um, yeah we're gonna go from there so let me get this printed and we'll try it out okay so I decided to go with the green airy one PLA plus for this just because I've still got quite a bit of it left more than enough to do this and I'm gonna kinda print each one of each piece just to kind of get a feel to see if they can be printed all at once or if you really need to do really need to separate the plug out the threaded plug out and print it separately so this is my old original Ender 3 um, it still has the original Creality control board in it so we're heated up let's get the printing okay the printing is done let's get them off of there and see how they um oh, they're pretty good let's get them off of there and I'll see how they fit hang on 
Okay, so there's my pieces. They actually came out really nice. Um, the main part itself I am very, very happy with. It just turned out super nice. And um, the um, support popped right off, which makes me very happy. Anytime support pops right off like that, I mean, I didn't even need a tool. I just grabbed it and twisted it with my fingers and it popped right off. That makes me very happy. I'm happy with the size of the handle. For, at first I thought it was going to be too long and too narrow, but you know what? For the size it is, I think it's just about perfect. My threads turned out really nice. Um, the only thing that really didn't turn out nice was my fillet on this part didn't turn out nice at all. And that kind of surprised me. Um, it's nothing a little sanding won't fix, but um, I expected that to turn out better. Now, here's the real problem. And as always, and I haven't cleaned, I haven't cleaned any of this up at all yet, but um, typically this is the problem I have. And that is, it's just, the threads just aren't going to go. Whoops. And also, typically, the problem is I have, I drop everything I pick up. My dad told me when I was a kid, once after I had just dropped his new watch on the patio floor and cracked the crystal, after he whooped my ass, he told me, son, never handle explosives for a living. And, um... While I have never handled them for a living, I have handled them as a dangerous amateur. <laughs> so, um, oh, that actually starts in there. It's still too tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print another. You know, why it started in there but not in here, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that ain't going to go. Okay, that's not really a problem. I am going to print a couple of more of these. Um, I think I'll start with 2% undersized because I can't even get that started in the, the handle. I'm going to print this 2% undersized and um, let's see where that goes. So let me do that next. Be right back. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Here is our part. Notice I have not really um, put anything together yet. Our parts all thread together. I did print the, um, the, end ca the plugs these threaded plugs. I did print these at 98% of normal size and my um, second one of these printed quite a bit nicer than my first one. Not sure what happened to that first one. Bottom, um, it might be the coarse line with I'm using. Uh, things of note, other than scaling these to 98%, at least for PLA, and even on my machine where I have a 0.1 millimeter horizontal hole expansion setting in it, 98% um, was right for me. A different number may be right for you, and a different filament type may, um, may change that as well. But things of note, a couple of tools to have. One thing is nice to have for this is a cheapo pair of pliers. I think these are like $1.50 or 2 bucks at Harbor Freight. And then get a can of their Plasti Dip and um, dip the tips in it. And um, you can see it's wearing off of this a little bit, but it kind of makes it easier to grab things like this without damaging it. And one of these little deburring tools, which lets you go into a hole like this and quickly and cleanly bevel that edge and clean any burrs out of it. Called a deburring tool. They're like eight or ten bucks on Amazon, I think. I'll put a link to one below. And um, they come with an extra tip or two in the, in the handle. So, let's see if we can put one of these together. So what I have in mind of doing is I'm going to use hot glue because I'm not convinced I'm not going to be taking this thing back apart again. And I can always let this thing sit out in the sun and unthread it or use a, a hair dryer to warm it up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hot glue on the threads and then thread it all the way down, hopefully. And, um, yeah, I hope that's what I'm going to do. Let's try it on the first one. Let's see what kind of luck I can get. So, see if I can do this on camera. So, a little bit of hot glue on the threads. I didn't want to get any there, but I did. And um, we're going to thread this down until it stops. And... Try not to screw it up too much. There we go. Alright, so... Now what I want to do besides clean all the extra hot glue off of it. 
I want to make sure my cap will still thread on after I brutalized it, and it will. So what I'm going to do now is take some of my fine lead shot, and I'm going to fill the cavity up. I think I want to leave it half an inch from the bottom of the thread, so I didn't know how much to bring in. Um, obviously I brought way too much. Um, I think even that may be a little too much. Let's kind of spill a few of those out. Okay, I'm liking that. So, now what I'm going to do is making sure I can easily start that, and I can. I'm going to hot glue in there, and I'm going to put that in and tighten it down with the pliers. Let's get the pliers handy. Here we go. So, same thing again. Hot glue. I don't probably need a lot, lot like not to get too much of it down in the shot which I just did, but that's life. And now that's not going on very nice. Hot glue probably wasn't the best choice for this because it's limiting the time I have to work on it too much. Okay. Alrighty then. I think that's perfect. It's got a nice feel to it. Alright. The caps just thread on at this point. Really don't need to do anything else. I'm not going to glue them. So, they just thread on till they bottom. Hopefully. Like that. And like that. Right? Like that. Is that cross-threading? What's it doing? It's like, that one's not going on for me for some reason. How come? Um, let's clean out the inside of that a little bit better. See if... See if that's the problem. I swear I tested these both ahead of time. But nope, that one ain't going on now. Well, that's not good, is it? I swear I tested both of these. I think my pliers kind of jacked it up a little bit. And that was to sort of be expected, I guess. I think what I will do is let's put a little lubricant on it. And let's see if we can um, see if we can um, convince it to go. Man, that is not going, is it? All right, I will be back. Hang on. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. All it took was a little bit of filing of the threads and a little gentle persuasion as you can see. I got it stuck on at one point, couldn't get it off, so I had to put a regular pair of pliers on it. But um, now I can unthread the caps and um, replace the caps with different material types. Or when I break them, if I decide that PLA Plus is all I need, both caps thread on and off tight. And, um, and this is a chunk of steel bar. It is one inch thick, 25 millimeters for you guys in Euroland, and every place else but the United States, unfortunately. And um, I should be able to give this some. Can you hear that? And even if I wreck the ends and split the ends, hopefully the shot won't all come flying out on me. So, I now have a test bed for different types of hammer ends. And I'm going to, in the future, I'm going to be printing some out of a, multiple different types of um, materials. And I'll see if I can't figure out some way to test them. Down in the comment section below, if you guys can think of anything I can build short of some Mythbuster style hammer swinging robot, which would be loads of fun. If you guys think of some kind of simple rig or simple way I can test my different hammer ends on this, let me know in the comment section. In the meantime, and hey, we've only got what is today. Today is the end of the 27th. We've only got a few more days till we bring the pieces in out of the heat and UV test and test those too. So. 
Please like and subscribe, hit notifications, let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll catch you guys the next time. Bye for now. Oh, and before I go, let me tell you that I will have all this up on Thingiverse. If you're watching this video as soon as I post it, please um, give me 15, 20, 30 minutes to get the Thingiverse links all posted and all that done. Bye.